All right, here we are on our way to Houston to meet up with some very uh, dynamic and accomplished security professionals. This should be fun. Okay, definitely one of the nicer hotels that I've been in. I'll give you a quick tour. All right, about to go meet with our first security professional and I'll let him introduce himself. All right, we're sitting down talking to one of the security professionals that I was referencing earlier, and I'll go ahead and have him introduce himself. My name is Jay Abiona. I'm the founder and CEO of Credible Security Solutions. All right, Jay, so how did you get started in this? In the security industry? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, it actually was just a job for me back in 1990. I obviously just took a job as a security guard. It seemed easy, something I can do. Um, I guess it was actually a lot deeper than that just because of things that I had growing up in my life that I see now led me to investigation, security, protecting people, and things of that nature. So I guess it wasn't as simple as it was just a job per se. But I did start as a security guard in 1990. In 1994 I got into store detective work. Okay. So I took the uniform off and actually went plain clothes and started catching shoplifters. Um, and basically from there I just liked that type of work and I liked the investigative part of it, not just the security part of it. So it was protecting people, protecting assets, mm -hmm. and there was some investigations there as well. You know, it wasn't as simple as just standing at a door. You're actually learning the five elements, you know, seeing the mentor, select, conceal, maintaining surveillance, making the apprehension, processing the paperwork. So I kind of took off in that industry, I think just because of my upbringing and what I grew up seeing and doing in New York. Um, I got promoted to lead detective, got promoted to executive, and basically when I retired from corporate per se, I was a regional loss prevention director. So I was okay. in charge of 300 locations, I did all of their internal investigations, I didn't really deal with shoplifting as much anymore unless it was organized retail crime, but I was still in the security industry, still in the investigative industry, and I just noticed that I didn't like the company culture of security companies, of the investigation agency. I felt like it was warm bodies with a uniform, or sometimes even cold bodies with a uniform, meaning they didn't even right. seem like they were alive. <laughs> but, you know, was it all the security guards' fault? Or was it also a company that may not have been training them, may not have been treating them right, poor company culture, not paying them right? not paying them at all, there was a thousand and one things that are going on. So I just felt like the only way to make a difference is to change it, to do something about it. So in 2010, I had the idea of opening up a company. I've been in the business at that time for uh, tw you know, 20 years at that time. Now it's going on 30 years. And um, I um, moved to Houston around the same time. I'm from New York originally, moved to Houston in 2009. Yeah, that's definitely not a Houston accent there. No, it's, it's a Southern <laughs> accent, my man. It's from the South Bronx, though. <laughs> right. But, um, but, um, but yeah, I moved here and, um, and decided to open the company up and figured if I can change the industry one client at a time, mm -hmm. one officer at a time, mm -hmm. not just one officer at a time, you also one client at a time. You know, because it's not just a matter of training officers and having them do the job right. I think it's a matter of training clients also. A lot of the companies that I, t I talk to feel like, oh, every time the phone rings, I have to win that contract. How do you get past that frame of mind? It's a challenge, it is. But first off, I think it's not taking it personal because you don't get the contract doesn't mean you did something wrong or someone's better than you. It's not an insecurity thing or a security thing meaning from your personal self, I think it's more along the lines of you've got to have a base. You know, we, we hear this all the time. We hear company culture, vision statements, mission statements, mm -hmm. but you've really got to have one that you believe in and if you can stick to that. You know, and I'll use an example, Walgreens. Nothing to do with security, but they're a company that has what's called the four-way test. And one of those is, um, the first one is along the lines of, you know, what I say is the truth. 
you know, something along those lines, but it has to do with the truth. And if something in their job goes against the truth, meaning if it's a lie, it doesn't meet what they call their four-way test. Similar to like a mission statement, they can actually probably terminate someone from their company who didn't follow the four-way test because that's built into their structure. And I feel like the same thing for a security company. You know, there has to be a mindset behind it where what you're getting out of doing security. Are you there to protect people? Are you there to just, um, you know, have thousands of hours and security guards? Um, and then having a basis of who you're going to protect. So, you know, being able to turn down certain jobs that don't fit within your company culture that may affect you personally, may affect your officers, may affect other accounts. You know, we do security for a, for a large Christian radio station here in Texas. How am I going to take on a gentleman's club at night? <laughs> so you've taken this position on creating a company culture. H how do you get that company culture to take within your company, right? H how do you get that to grow and become the vision that you have in, in mind? Because a lot of companies, they start out with, we're going to do this or we're going to be about that. Right. And somewhere down that path, they completely lose that. H how do you get that to stick? So I guess that's a few fold, not even two folds. Um, so I think people lose that path because they obviously finances come into play. You know, they want to take any job they can get because they need the work. Um, I think they're not looking at the bigger picture. You know, when you build a brick wall, it's not just a brick wall. It's literally one brick at a time being placed strategically, secured, perfectly straight. And even though that takes longer than just slapping the bricks on, at the end you're going to have a brick wall that lasts longer, that's stronger, that looks better. And I think it's the same thing. I think it's figuring out what your culture is about and one brick at a time, putting those bricks together, building that wall, which is going to take some time. It's not going to be something that happens in a, in, a, in a week, a month, a year. Sometimes it can even take a decade or more before you start building something. I think actually living it, not just saying it, is following, being true to what you're saying and getting the rest of your staff to follow through with that as well. You know, okay. letting them know they're not just a body in place. You know, when you start having good reviews from your clients, that's great. Mm -hmm. When you start getting emails from your clients saying your officer did a good job, that's wonderful. When you start having officers that put reviews for you online saying, I've never worked for a company like this before, they pay me good, they treat me well, they train right. me, they do proper things, you have just proven that you're, you're sticking to your company culture. So you talk a lot about protecting of your customers, right? That, that's your background, that's what you do. What challenges do you think that your customers are facing nowadays? What, what, what's the main thing that you would like to talk to your customers about when it comes down to their security? Right. Well, I think it's two things, actually. So, and, the, and, they, and they go hand in hand. So, one, I think we're very aware of all of these active shooter situations that are happening. And actually, I like to change the term and call it a mass casualty attack. Okay. Because, you know, active shooter, we right away think of a gun. But realistically, there's been plenty of situations where it's a knife, it's a machete, it's a car, it's a van, it's mm -hmm. two planes that have knocked down buildings in New York City. Okay. So it's a mass casualty attack. So I think just focusing on the gun is not it. But I think the issues that, that, that businesses are having are the chance of mass casualty attacks. So the second thing, obviously, as I was saying before, fits together with this one, and it's hiring, it's employees. Okay. So, for, for twofold. One, having the, well, a lot of reasons. The main reason, having a good employee who's gonna obviously follow the company culture and help build the company. But, one, we don't wanna have an employee that's stealing from the company. Uh -huh. And two, we don't want to have an employee that's disgruntled and becomes one of those mass casualty attackers. Got and it. some of this, I think, can actually be seen in the interviewing process. You're saying conduct an interview to make sure that someone's honest. I mean, how do you do that? So, a, a few ways. I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of particulars to it, but even as the way you set up the room, I mean, you know, when you, most people who do an interview are going to do an interview on one side of the desk and the person's on the other side of the desk. That right away is putting a block in between the two people. Usually okay. when I do interviews, I'll take the chair out from the desk, put the other chair, and we're facing each other in the room. Okay. okay. And what I'm looking for is, one, I'm asking open-ended questions, not closed-ended questions. Like, for instance, are you going to come to work on time? Yep, sure am. As opposed to, if I was to call your supervisor, what do you think your supervisor would say about your attendance record? Now that's an open-ended question. So now I'm not just listening to the answer, but I'm actually watching the body language as well. 
So we teach a class called Interviews for Success and Insider's Approach to Reading Body Language. Okay. And we're teaching people how to review the application, check the references, what questions to ask the references, how to take those notes, how to set the room up for an effective interview, how to ask open-ended questions, how to respond to those open-ended questions, how to read the body language of someone who's being honest or dishonest, and how to read facial micro-expressions. So if someone, if someone, if I say to someone, so tell me about your boss, did you get along with your boss? Yeah, we got along really good. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm saying the word said yes. But why did the eyebrows go down and why did the lips pierce? That is a facial micro-expression of anger. That doesn't mean they're lying, but why are they angry when I mention their boss's name? The micro-expression mm -hmm. was timely with the question and it matches what their emotion was. So I'll start asking them more questions about their boss. Come to find out they may have been sexually harassed. Come to find out maybe their boss didn't pay them. Whatever the reason is, mm -hmm. That micro-expression showed me something more to ask about in an interview. So if there's somebody out there who's uh, interested in learning more about this, how do they contact you? Uh, they can go to our website, which is www.credible-ss.com, or they can just Google Credible Security Solutions. We are all over the internet. Talk to you, sir. Appreciate it, Courtney.